welcome to my presentation about perceptual model for adaptive local shading and refresh rate. My name is Akshay Jindal and I'm a PhD student at the University of Cambridge. I'm presenting this work on behalf of my co-authors, Krzysztof Wolski, Karel Miskowski, and Rafal Mantuik. As the technology evolves, shaders are growing in complexity and real-time graphics is becoming increasingly real. The display resolution is also growing with reports of 8K HDR and 360 Hz displays now available, though not together. Mobile devices, which are limited by their power, have become a common gaming platform. More recently, there's an increase in adoption of cloud gaming, where GPU virtualization allows for a single GPU to be shared among multiple users. All these trends often mean that a GPU must operate at a fraction of its bandwidth. This gives rise to an obvious question. Given a constraint on GPU bandwidth, how to render? One of the most widely used solution is to reduce the resolution of the frame buffer, depending on the available bandwidth. It is easy to implement and integrate into any graphics pipeline. However, as you can see in the video, it leads to blurry and alias results. Another popular solution is to reduce the frame rate. Though this will work well for still scenes, for dynamic scenes, it can lead to juddery motion. In one of our earlier work, we showed how we can take advantage of adaptive sync displays and eye trackers to find a trade-off between frame rate and resolution. As you can see in this video, high resolution is used when the camera is still or the eye is fixating and high frame rate is used when the camera is in motion or the eye is following an object. This approach works great. However, it requires an eye tracker, a technology which is yet to be widely adopted. Furthermore, it doesn't account for content and thus reduces the frame buffer resolution uniformly. With recent advances in GPU technologies such as variable rate shading that allows for more flexible local control of shading resolution, this approach becomes suboptimal. Variable rate shading, popularly known as VRS, is a technology that is now available on almost all latest GPUs. VRS decouples shading and visibility calculations to provide flexible control over shading. By rasterizing at full resolution, but shading at a lower resolution, the technique reduces pixel shading load while preserving edges and visibility of objects. It divides the frame into 16 cross 16 pixel tiles and allows for selecting the shading resolution of each tile independently. Currently, the available shading rates include 1x1, 2x1, 1x2, 2x2, up to 4x4. Note that the shading rate denotes the number of pixels a shaded sample is broadcasted to, and hence, higher rate implies lower resolution. Also note that VRS allows for non-uniform shading rates, that is, one axis can have a higher resolution than the other. As you can imagine, this technology has enabled a lot of adaptive rendering strategies and can potentially give a big boost in performance for scenes with complex shading. Some examples of applications include foveated rendering or motion adaptive visually lossless rendering. Using VRS, we extend our previous work to further optimize the quality of rendering. Here's a quick preview of a technique running on Unity 3D and a full HD G-Sync display. The number in Hertz denotes the refresh rate of the display and the colorful map represents the shading rates with blue being the highest shading resolution and red being the lowest. As you can see, we now change the shading resolution non-uniformly, depending on the content and object motion. Also, another big practical advantage of a technique is that we no longer require an eye tracker. A method can be divided into two major steps. We first develop a perceptual model that can predict if reducing shading resolution for a given texture will lead to visible artifacts. The model is mapped to a subjective quality scale by conducting a psychophysical experiment. Finally, during rendering, we use this quality model to derive an optimal VRS map and refresh rate. Let's get into the details of the first step. That is, when are VRS artifacts visible? Consider a reference image rendered at full resolution and the same image rendered at a 4x4 VRS shading rate. As you can see, the edges of the car are well-preserved, but the texture has visible distortions. 
the visibility of these distortions depends on multiple factors. They will be less visible under dark setting. They will change depending on texture content. They will be harder to see when the object is far away or when it is under fast motion. They will get worse when the display refresh rate is low. We propose a perceptual model that take all these content and display parameters and analyzes their effect in frequency domain. It then outputs the quality loss caused by low shading rate. Let's take an example of a very simple signal, a box moving horizontally with the velocity V. A box can be represented with a sync function in Fourier domain. When we reduce the shading resolution, it can be interpreted as increasing the pixel size. The MIP mapping operation in graphics pipeline ensures that Excel to pixel size ratio is always close to one is to one. Hence, when VRS shading rate is low, it ends up picking lower resolution MIP map levels. MIP mapping thus results in attenuation of high frequencies. Low shading rate or MIP map level means the texture is downsampled. The downsampling using the nearest neighbor approach as used in the VRS leads to creation of signal replicas in frequency domain. These replicas leads to folding of high frequency onto lower frequencies and the resulting distortions are perceived as aliasing and blur as shown in this bunny model mapped to a box texture. We now have an image rendered on the screen. When the object undergoes motion, the display presents the image for a small fraction of time called display persistence. For common displays, it is the inverse of the display refresh rate, but some modern displays allow for changing the persistence of the display. While the object on the screen moves in discrete steps, our eyes undergo a continuous motion to track it. This leads to smearing of the displayed image on our retina, which is perceived as blur, commonly known as whole type blur. Also, the tracking of our eye is not perfect, which can lead to additional blurring. Higher the velocity of the object, higher the blur, that is attenuation of high frequencies. This attenuation can potentially cancel the aliasing artifacts caused in the previous step thereby masking their visibility. Finally, once we know the image formed on our retina, we can modulate it with contrast sensitivity function or CSF. CSF tells us how sensitive we are to different spatial frequencies under varying illumination. It has a bandpass structure with a peak around three to five cycles per degree. We can take the difference in energy of the distorted signal and the reference signal as a measure of the amount of visible spatial distortions. Similarly, we can also determine the energy of temporal distortions. Here are some sample predictions of a model, which estimates that the quality difference between high and low shading rates decreases with velocity. To calibrate our model, we performed a psychophysical study where we showed observers various textures under different velocities and shading resolution. We used two color calibrated displays placed side by side showing some popular 3D models texture mapped with one of the four textures. The models moved horizontally with a fixed velocity under either full, half, or quarter VRS shading rate. The resolution, refresh rate, mean luminance, and persistence of the displays was adjusted to simulate PC, mobile, and VR viewing configurations. The participants had the ability to see high resolution reference image and were asked to pick the condition that was closer to its respective reference. To avoid viewer fatigue and limit the number of trials, we used the active sampling technique proposed by Mihaluk and others, which picked the most informative pairs for comparison. The pairwise comparison results from the experiment were then mapped to a JND scale. A difference of one JND between two conditions mean that 75% of the population prefer one condition over the other. Here are some observations from the experiment. The trend is different for different textures. Increasing the shading rate for a high frequency noise texture has a much larger quality gain compared to a low frequency gradient texture. The distance between high and low shading rate decreases with velocity, which means it is harder to notice distortion when the object is in motion. Though not shown in this slide, we observe the effect of velocity to be negligible in low persistence VR displays. In a prior work, we have shown that quality and visual energy are linearly related. 
Hence, we can calibrate our model by linearly fitting it to this data. Now, we have a model that can predict quality degradation caused by differentiating resolutions for a given texture under varying refresh rate, luminance, and velocity. We will use this model to calculate the optimal refresh rate and VRS map, which maximizes the perceived quality when the GPU is working under a constrained bandwidth. This constraint could be on power, transmission, or GPU load. Without loss of generality, we assume the constraint to be on shading bandwidth expressed in pixels per second. We start by pre-computing the refresh rates that maximizes the quality for a given bandwidth and a range of velocities. The results are stored as a lookup table. The lookup table is then sampled before rendering every frame using the average velocity pulled from the motion buffer. This gives us the refresh rate of that frame as well as the shading budget. That is the maximum number of pixels that are allowed to be shaded in this rendering pass. To calculate the optimal VRS map, we sample our motion quality model once at initialization and fit an analytical function to it for every texture. This is done to minimize the performance overhead from using our model. During rendering, we use the texture ID velocity, and average luminance of each 16 cross 16 VRS style to calculate the quality of each possible shading rate. Then we solve an optimization problem that picks the shading rate for each style such that the total shaded pixels are within the shading budget and the total quality is maximized. The optimization problem is very similar to a zero one knapsack problem. We have n tiles. Each tile has a weight, that is its number of shaded pixels and a value, that is the quality of the shading rate. Though it's a well-known problem, most of its optimal solutions are very computationally expensive. Hence, we use a parallel greedy approximation to solve this problem for every frame. It is implemented using compute shaders and only has a small overhead of 1.3 milliseconds for full HD resolution. We validated our technique in a video game setting on three scenes. The scenes contained a wide variety of motion paths, texture content, and camera controls. We compared Ulsar against MAR method proposed by Danish and others, as well as fixed refresh rate and resolution rendering. The plot shows the percentage of participants picking Ulsar over other methods. Ulsar consistently performed better than all existing solutions for low bandwidths. Our work is not without its limitations. One of the major drawbacks is that we use diffuse textures as a proxy for image frequency content. But for some complex materials, this might not hold true. For example, in case of reflections, transparency, and particle systems, our method ends up allocating non-optimal shading rates due to incorrect shading information. This can in theory be handled by shifting analysis from texture space to screen space, though it might be non-trivial to achieve a good performance. Another drawback of our work from a practical standpoint is that we operate in a fairly abstract unit of pixels per second for budget instead of GPU cycles. An investigation into how GPU power ties to VRS shading rate could prove useful. Finally, our work only focused on foveal vision. However, our sensitivity to motion artifacts is drastically reduced in a peripheral vision, which can be exploited to achieve further gains in foveated rendering. To summarize the presentation, we started with the motivation that the next-gen real-time graphics will be limited by the GPU bandwidth. We saw how displays and GPUs are becoming more flexible. We developed a content-aware model of judder, aliasing, and blur. And finally, we discussed how this model can be used along with G-Sync and VRS to improve the rendering quality. The dataset and source code can be found on our project page.